Are you looking for a good solution for a one terabyte SSD for your Apple computer? I got a solution today for about 140 bucks. It's gonna be fairly fast, so go ahead and pull up a seat and stay tuned. Let's get into it. All right, so we actually went through this a couple weeks ago. I showed you a couple of the different drives that I purchased, and one of them was actually a 860 QV, uh, QVO, which is by Samsung, so here it is here. This is the one I'm actually gonna use. I actually picked this up for about $90, and I got this over at Micro Center. Um, I also showed you guys another one, which is actually from Inland. It's an SSD, but this is actually gonna be an uh, NVMe. It's M.2. This one's actually extremely fast. I'm gonna go through another video on this soon. This one actually goes up to 3,100 megabits per second. But we're not going to go through this one today. That's actually a different type of uh, enclosure than I have here today. The one I'm going to go through today is actually going to be the 860 QVO. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make an external drive uh, with this drive and with this enclosure, which I picked up. This was about, uh, let me think about this, it was about $45, $50, somewhere in that range. So we're all in for about $140 total. And this is the enclosure I'm going to go through today right here. Um, it's the OWC, that's Otherworld Computing. You can go to Otherworld Computing and pick this up. It's the Mercury Elite Pro Mini. And this is actually a solid aluminum enclosure, which I'm gonna go through here in a second. And it's basically a big block of aluminum you can see here. It's got its name, Mercury Elite Pro Mini on the, on the front of it. Um, on the side also, it's got a number of ports, which I'll go through here in the video. It's got an on and off switch and things like that, but nothing else on this side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically, you know, obviously put this into here, this solid aluminum case here for your Apple product. It comes with a whole bunch of different cords, which we'll go through too. And I'm gonna show you the speed of it. Now, ultimately, what I'm gonna to try to do, and this will be in a different video, is I have a 2007 iMac, which I went through a couple, you know, a couple of videos ago. Um, I'm sorry, not a 2007, 2017, sorry, 2017 uh, iMac. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, it has the one terabyte fusion drive, and that drive actually is, is it's really benchmarking pretty high, like as far as the benchmarks, but I know that's not real. On the fusion drive, you get, you know, the one I have, it's only got 32 gigs, somewhere in that range of, um, you know, SSD built into it. So when you hit that limit, the drives considerably slow down. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna, this, this thing, when we actually get this all built, we do black magic on it, my guess is it's gonna be in the four to 500s, probably the 400s, maybe even the high 300s on how fast it is, megabits per second. And we're gonna actually boot um, that 2017 iMac, the OS from that, onto this system and see if we get any performance gains. It's not gonna benchmark as high in black magic, like I had mentioned, it's gonna probably be like four to 500 megabits per second. But I can guarantee that the speed's gonna be a lot faster than the Fusion Drive, even though the Fusion Drive appears faster because it's only taking these really small bursts of data. Um, and a lot of times when you actually do this, it's gonna be a lot faster. So I'll leave the other system intact, but basically I'm gonna, I'm gonna boot from this and we're gonna show some examples of that coming up. Ultimately, I'm gonna boot from this one once I get my other enclosure in, which is the super fast one, and we're gonna see if I can get any more gains from that as well. So even if you have a fairly new iMac, um, like a 2017, and you have the Fusion Drive, you can still make it faster and you can still do it easily and I'm going to show people how to do that. But for now, let's go ahead and test this enclosure here and this information here. We'll see how fast this is and I'll go ahead and you know show you some benchmarks. All right, before we get into that, here's the actual case. Um, obviously, the important thing here is it's a 3.1 Gen 2 connection, but this is the Mercury Elite Pro Mini. Here's some specs. You can go ahead and pause it. Again, USB 3.1 Gen 2 is important. comes with the warranty information as well. Um, here's a little bit uh, of the ports that are included. It has an east SATA port, which we're not going to be using, the 3.1 port. It's got an on and off switch. It does have a DC in, but this is actually going to be bus powered, so we don't need any power source. In some rare cases, like if you're using a spinning drive or something, it might require it. But it is fanless, bus powered, it's totally portable, and full metal aluminum enclosure. And I got this for about, like I said, you know, only like 40 something bucks. And you can stack these if you want. Here's just a quick picture on how to stack them. In the box, here we go, it comes with a, the enclosure here, some instructions and some cabling. Cabling, there's quite a bit. Um, there's a USB 3.1, which we're gonna use, uh, the, the Gen 2 actually. There's the eSATA cable, DC to USB, which we're not gonna use because we don't need actual power there. So just one cable's needed. Here they are, the cables again. You can take a look at the cables here. Um, they give you all four of them, but again, just really quickly, we're only gonna use one. Here's one more close look at the enclosure. Um, we're gonna go ahead and install the disc now. So there's two screws here, which you're gonna take a look at. We're gonna remove those in a second. The other side of the enclosure has nothing but some holes for some venting and things like that, so it's nothing big. And again, here's the enclosure if you wanna take a quick peek at it, but it's all aluminum enclosure. 
All right, and really quickly, here are the instructions. So you can go ahead and pause this again if you want to take a look at this. I just wanted to add these so you can see what they look like. Here's the second page. It's really only two pages of instructions, so very easy to get this installed. Um, and like I said, we're going to be using the drive on the right here, which is just the normal SSD, the 860 QVO. So we're not going to, we're going to use the other one in another uh, video, but for now we're going to use the standard one. And I got this for only about 92 bucks, even though the sticker says 129 but here's a good look at the box. On here you see two screws here, and these are the two screws you want to take off first and remove those. And once you've done that, then basically you slide the SSD into the enclosure. Super, super easy. Takes about two seconds. And then at the very bottom, you screw in these four screws to uh, attach the uh, SSD right to the enclosure. And then those two screws in the front, you basically screw those back, and you are ready to go. Once you're done, your enclosure is fully, you know, it's fully solid and ready to go for you to connect to the computer. All right, so after plugging in the drive, again, this is going to be the USB-C port. Um, you're going to get this message here because it's going to say the disk you inserted is not readable by this computer. You may get this, so if you do this, basically, all you have to do here is, you know, you don't want to click ignore, don't click eject, but you go ahead and click initialize. And it's actually going to bring up this screen, which is the disk utility screen. So in here, we basically, you know, we have to uh, basically select the new drive, and then we're going to go ahead and, and try to... Um, you know, we can either rename it in here, but we really want to erase it and repartition it, I guess, or just basically make it into a disk that the Apple computer can actually read here. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure you do not select your Macintosh HD. This is the actual volume that came with my computer. That's the wrong one. So what you want to do is, here's the external drive right here. Make sure you select that for sure. That's the uh, important one that you want to select. It's going to show the one terabyte drive that I actually put in here. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to click Erase right here. And it's going to bring this up. So here we can actually create a name for it. And I'm going to just put SSD one terabyte, just so we know that's the SSD. Um, the thing that you actually do want to actually select here is Mac OS Extended Journaled for this drive. Um, when we install the OS later, it's going to pick which is the best for it. So for now, right now, just you know, go ahead and select this one. And then basically, for the scheme, you want to select the GUID partition map. All right, so once you're done selecting all that, we want to go ahead and click Erase. Again, before you click Erase, though, make sure for sure that you're actually on your external drive and not your main drive. That would be bad, so make sure you're on your external drive. So once we're on external, you want to click Erase. It's going to go ahead and format the disk for you and go ahead and partition it. Um, do you want to use the SSD to back up for Time Machine? Um, we're going to put Don't Use right now because we're going to use this for something else. So I'm going to click Don't Use right there, and then it's going to say Done. All right, so go ahead and click on the one terabyte drive again that we just basically went ahead and formatted. You can see it's the SSD one terabyte external that we just used, Mac OS Extended Journal. It's 999.86 you know, gigabytes that are gonna be the capacity. Um, available is 999.2, so it didn't take up that much. Just a couple of uh, 663 megabytes were used. So here's the disk. Um, a lot of it's free, 999 is free, and it's all ready to go. So the disk, this disk should be ready to go. And we can go ahead and actually close out of disk utility here. So let's go ahead and test the speed of this disk now um, that we're all ready to go. Let's go ahead and pull up Black Magic, and we're gonna go ahead and, and Let's go launch that right now. So we're going to show you what this is going to do. So here we are. You definitely want to click on um, right here, this little uh, icon that looks like a, a wheel. You want to select the target drive. So make sure you select right here. That's the drive that we were talking about before. And then click open. So now we're going to be testing the new SSD drive that we just added. Let's go ahead in here and we're going to go ahead and click speed test and let's let this run. As you can see, what we're pulling basically off of this SSD right now, um, let's go ahead and let it run for a second here, but we're probably going to be around 469 on the writes, and on the reads it's going to be always be a little bit faster, it looks like in a lot of cases, and we're going to get up to about 511.1. So if we go ahead and do another test here, um, it should be a little bit slow just because of the way it does this test, it's going to be around 460, let's see here, 468, 469, somewhere in that range on the writes and we're up to about 508, somewhere 509, somewhere in that range on the reads. So as you can see, that's basically what this is gonna do. Let's go ahead and stop this, and we'll actually close out of the speed disk right here. But there, go, there you go. So basically, that's going to be what I'm going to run my OS off of when I do my test. And I'm also going to try the other one as well. That's a lot faster. But we should get substantial gains from that versus the one terabyte, you know, fusion drive just because of the way it's built. And as you can see over here, I have the icon up here. So this is going to be, uh, you know, something that we'll try out and we'll see how everything goes. But for now, you see how the speeds are on this and they are pretty good. 
All right, well, thanks for watching, and I hope everyone learned a little bit about how fast this, this kind of uh, enclosure plus SSD is if you actually go this route. It's about 140 bucks all in, so if you go with one of those pre-built ones from Samsung or something like that, um, you, you know, obviously it's gonna be fairly similar. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive to do it that way. This gives you the option of, you know, you know when maybe a two terabyte comes out in a couple years, you can actually upgrade to that and, and you know, use the same enclosure. These are pretty much built for Apple, more or less, um, although they work on PCs as well. So. I hope everyone learned a little bit on how fast this is in case you want to go ahead and buy it yourself. And we're going to make those videos in a little bit about how to make your 2017 iMac a little bit faster as well. So stay tuned for that. If anyone can support me out, that would help me out a lot. Just, you know, hopefully give me the, you know, a like and also uh, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to make a lot more of these videos, but I'll talk to you guys in a week or, you know, hopefully a week. I usually make a couple of videos a week. So talk to you soon. Take care.